The pressure on business leaders to balance profitability and fairness is mounting. Disparities in pay between senior executives and other employees have become obscene. The gap between top and bottom is growing, and technological disruption is only making it worse. Artificial intelligence can potentially automate quite a lot of jobs, including some high-skilled ones. As companies strive to secure a stable future in today's turbulent times, could the key to success lie in giving employees a share of the business? Businesses today face a complicated array of commercial challenges. Tried and tested remedies tend to focus on the mechanics of business, but there's another asset with huge potential that often gets overlooked. Employees will all have ideas, and most of them very good ideas, about how to improve their day job. And actually, if you challenge them a bit further, they'll have bigger ideas about uh, how the business could be improved. The influence and power of the workforce is best harnessed by giving employees a slice of the company. Employee ownership is a way of owning and governing a company. The key ingredient is that all the employees in that company own a shareholding that underpins engagement mechanics in a way that draws out the best of employees so that employees get a benefit not only financially but actually through close participation in the business. Employee ownership isn't a new concept. Its earliest roots date back over a century, with companies like John Lewis in the UK operating internal democratic councils as early as 1919. In 1956, the first employee stock ownership plan was established in the US. And in 1987, when the first special economic zone was created, employee ownership came to China. Shenzhen is the, the very first uh, you know, special zone of China, so while we can launch this kind of special plan to stimulate its employees. Employee ownership insulates a company from external influence. That leaves decision-making exclusively in the hands of the business itself. And it creates a much deeper connection between junior staff and senior management. In Huawei, there's bunches of means to report your ideas, your thoughts, your thinking to the you know, higher level uh, directors and even to the directors of the board. We are being recognized and we are part of this uh, company, we are the owner of this company. Structurally, employee ownership comes in two main forms. Direct ownership, where individual employees own shares personally, and indirect ownership, where shares are held on behalf of employees by a trust. Both deliver financial incentives for employees, but this is just one of the advantages. For most of colleagues, first of all, the ESOP means you know, money, of course, more money, more bonus. But for me, it means recognition. And this company recognized your work, uh, recognized your uh, contribution. I think the most important thing is that employees feel like they are doing something. They make a difference rather than just making money. Employee ownership is designed to foster a collaborative way of working. Employee-owned companies are fundamentally fair places to work. People can earn different amounts based on the jobs they do, but typically there is a, an egalitarian sharing of profits. Everyone feels empowered. They care about the quality of what they're doing and they're always thinking about improvements. You know, how many other companies can say that about their employees? It sounds too good to be true. So is it? I struggle to identify disadvantages with the employee ownership business model, but there is still some resistance, essentially because a lot of people in the business world uh, find it an alien concept. You know, they are used to hierarchical structures. They are used to a particular way of running a business. And so it does involve unwinding that. Employee ownership is thriving in the UK with record growth of 28% across the sector last year. But that's still only a total of 470 companies. So it's clear the business model and its numerous advantages needs further promotion. Politicians have an important role in generating publicity for employee ownership. 
If you want to generate growth in an economy, if you want to create innovation in an economy, if you want to reduce inequality or even um, create belonging in a fragmented society, employee ownership can be a big part of achieving those policy aims. Employee ownership may not be for every company, but there's no doubt about its potential. Perhaps by reframing traditional approaches to business, its value and impact can one day improve not only companies, but society at large.